All right, internet. This one was a toughie. And I'll be honest, I had to read through like 15 answers and watch two videos just to kind of understand what the answer is and how it was like derived. Um, we'll see if I can explain it to you because I uh, don't think I will be able to, but we'll give it a try anyways. Um, so with Natas 20, we're trying to get to 21, and here we're being prompted to basically change your name. So you're already logged in, so you can see that you're logged in as a regular user, and they want you to log in as an admin to get the credentials. Um, so as per usual, we have the source code, which is nice. Um, so we can come in here and put some stuff in and see what happens. So if I come in here and type admin without showing you the answer, uh, change name, nothing happens. So if we inspect this and we go to the, the cookie, uh, which is basically where we've gone previous challenges, so that's kind of the guess to what this might be. Um, you go to storage, go to cookies, you can see that this is the cookie here. And if I actually delete this and change it consistently, you'll see that the cookie keeps changing, right? So I'm not changing the name or anything. It just keeps, it keeps giving me a new cookie. So that's one good thing to, I guess, notice is that the cookie consistently changes irrelevant of the name change or the input we put in here. So we'll delete this and now we'll jump into the source code and the source code is really uh, what, like how you find out the answer here. And one thing I'll actually point out is a series of tutorials that I thought were quite useful. So I first started out with this one, which is uh, floating bytes here. They've done a good job at really breaking down the code. So if I zoom out a bit, you can see they've basically talked about the code snippet here in detail, talking through the different parts of the code and eventually getting to the correct answer, which you'll see is here and I'll explain what that is. Um, they, they show you two different ways to do it. So you can do it directly inside of the URL section up here, or you can actually do a curl statement through your terminal. So I thought that was a pretty good tutorial. I'm um, not the best, but pretty good. And another tutorial I came across here, uh, which is a computer science blog. And here it does a very similar approach where I really appreciated the fact that they have, they've actually broken down all the functions inside of the code and they talk through each section. So one thing I did here is I actually did a side by side with the code snippet, which is here I have in Sublime. And I basically read through all the functions inside of their explanation and tried to kind of grok it on this side of the code and try to understand what's being discussed. So that was the useful piece here for that one. Still struggled to understand really what, like how they came to specific answers. So that was useful, but not completely. And then another one here, um, N0J GitHub, we've, we've seen this one in the past with other challenges. Um, they walk you through this as well. I thought this was probably uh, a little bit better than the past, so we're getting slowly better. Um, this one uh, on learning to hack the planet, uh, cram, cramhack.com. This, the cramhack.com and the next one, Security Times, I think these were two of the, the best blogs because they actually explained, or at least I understood it finally once I've read like the 20th explanation um, of what was happening. So I'm gonna really try my best to explain how, how they came to the answer they came to. And I guess first we'll start with the answer. So the answer is basically adding a URL encoding of uh, two specific things. So what we're gonna add is we're gonna have an input of uh, basically anything. It could be test, it could be, um, you know, green, purple, alien, whatever you want it to be. Um, but for us, we'll just say admin. And then that's gonna be our input there. But right after our input, we're actually gonna have a slash n, which is basically new line. And our new line is gonna be admin, all lowercase. And then we're gonna have a space here. And then we're gonna have a one. That's my sign for a space. I don't know what the fuck that means. All right, space. And once we put that in, that's going to be all URL encoded, and then we're going to get our answer back. And to show you what that looks like specifically, I will type it in here if I can remember it. And actually, a way to figure that out, let's go to CyberChef, and I will show you what that looks like in CyberChef. So we're going to URL encode this because we remember we want to put it inside of the URL, so it has to have URL encoding. And so we're going to say admin, which is our like our bogus input for the name. And then we're going to say admin again and a one. And I pushed enter for new line. So you can see down here, if I can zoom in. Oh, that's huge. Yes. And actually, what I can do, I'll just copy and paste this somewhere else where it's easier to see for you. 
So we'll just bring it to our code snippet here, paste it there, and we'll zoom in super duper far. All right, so this is gonna be our URL encoding. And before this, we're actually gonna have, uh, let me give you the specifics. So it'd be a question mark, which is the command we're putting in. And then we're gonna say name equals that. So this is gonna be basically the whole entire piece of the encoding that we're gonna put in. So let's try to explain this and let me change the coloring again. Okay. So here, uh, our new line is going to be the percent sign a. So that's going to be our um, slash n, what's going to be something like that. All right, slash, I think that way. No, that's all right. The first one's right. So this is new line. And then this here, the percent to zero, that is going to be our space. So that's just going to be space. And then we have our one. So we have um, admin one and then admin our bogus name. So now that we know the answer, right? So that's, that's the end goal. We're trying to get there. We need to figure out why did we know that and how did we get to that answer? And there's a lot that I had to grok to understand this. Um, grok in the sense that I banged my face against Google quite a bit. Um, I'm going to walk you through the code. I'm not going to walk through everything. I'm just going to walk through the important pieces that help you get to this answer. Um, first things first, let me look at my notes and see if there's anything special that jumps out that I should share with you. Uh, nope. All right. Let's jump into it. So in the code, there's really uh, a few different functions that matter and the functions that we need to look at specifically. So we can start at the top and I'll kind of walk you through and skip over some of the stuff that's relevant. So as per usual, we don't need to look at the header. That's not relevant. Um, first things first we see is a debug statement. So this is quite interesting because one of the tutorials actually mentioned that in here you can see that it's taking in a variable of debug. So that means that we could actually input debug inside of our URL. So if we go here in this section and we do a uh, question mark for command and then we do debug, it's actually going to show us some debug statements on the screen. And that's reflecting what's being shown specifically the debug function. If I scroll down a bit further, we're going to see some of the context here of the debug context, the, the different debug functions that are being executed and the content being pulled out of those debug functions. So one thing I did grok here as well is actually bouncing back and forth between the code and what I'm seeing on screen here to try to understand what specifically is being written here. And we can see that the debug statement is calling on a function called my read. So it's reading a cookie, the cookies I've shown you previously. It's reading an existing session cookie I have with the server. And then you can see that it's uh, written that cookie as well previously as well in the debug piece. It's written that, that cookie specifically um, attaching it to this file in this folder location. And we can see that uh, the session file doesn't exist originally when it read it, but then it wrote it. So it said, okay, this cookie doesn't exist. So it says, I, I read, I'm reading the session cookie. It doesn't exist. Fine. It doesn't exist. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write that session cookie to this specific file location. So first things first, we can see that it's running through that debug piece. So that's nice to know that we have that and we have some interesting pieces there. This is the uh, most important thing, which is what we've seen in previous challenges. And the goal here is basically to ensure that we can do a few things. And we see this, uh, this basically this large condition. So this big condition here, uh, starting from here to here, um, really the end goal is to make sure that our session, um, our session key, is admin and our session value is one. That's the end goal, right? So our key and our value. Now there's some other conditions here, which is basically checking that there's a session. So this first, first section here is saying, okay, um, is there a session that exists? That's basically asking this condition here. So if this is true, then I want you to go to the next thing. The next thing is saying, okay, um, does this session have admin as the key? If so, if that's true, continue. And then it's getting to see here basically stating that, okay, is the key session admin equal to one? If so, then I want you to come here and I want you to print all the goodies and I'm going to give you the password, which is this. And that's what we need. So this is the important thing. So let's scroll down here. We can see some more stuff. So we have a my open function, which is always true. So we can ignore that because it's basically always pulling back true. Same for my close. It's another uh, custom function, but it's basically returning true. So it doesn't matter. And you can see in the comments that we don't need this. We don't need this below down here. So we have a larger function, which is a read function, that section there. And if you go a bit further, we have a write function here. 
And then we have some other functions we're not using as well. So we have a destroy and a, and a garbage, and we can see those, those are needed. If we go down here, we see how where all those functions are being held. They're being held in the session handler. And that's basically handling the sessions on what it should do um, with the session. And another thing that I did within the tutorials is someone actually referenced the PHP session handler website for PHP here. And I read a bit through this. It was somewhat insightful, kind of walking you through what the session handler's purpose is, but it wasn't anything that was groundbreaking. So we'll jump back into the code. And now we have all this stuff. Uh, session start is basically when the, the session initially starts. And let's see what else we have here to explain. Um, we have an array, uh, if the array exists. So this is not anything that was substantial. And print condition credentials, uh, which is what we talked about above already. And then we have uh, another uh, array with the session, okay. So really what I'm gonna focus on is the reading and writing. And remember, when we were in here in the debug statement, we saw that this is the read function and this is the write function. And that's what we're referring to in these larger functions. So we'll start with uh, the read first. So first things first, what we're gonna do with this read function is we're gonna ensure that the session ID is a valid session ID. And that's what this really this little piece here is doing. It's ensuring that it has these set of characters and if it doesn't, then it's not a valid session ID. Um, next thing is it's going to write uh, it's going to write that file name to that specific location. So remember how we said it's going to be that location and it's going to be uh, appended to um, my sesh underscore, and that's what's referring to the section here. So we have um, my sesh underscore there, and we're appending our session key there, and that's our our session ID is going to be this section here, uh, that piece there. Okay, so we have that. We know what that and we get we get that understanding. And basically it's saying if it doesn't exist, then you know go to the next thing. So after that, after we've written our session ID to that file location, um, we're going to read it. Uh, we're going to read the file name, put it into this variable. And an important thing to point out here is um, once we've read all that stuff, we're going to read the specific key value pairs. And you can see that this explode talks about that. So. Before I talk about this for each loop and the explode piece, I should probably talk about the write first so you can understand what I'm referring to here when I say key value pairs. So if I scroll down a bit further for the write section, we can see it. we have our session ID and our data. Um, this is similar to what I said above, so we're checking to see it's a valid session, a valid session ID. And then we're gonna go to the, the file here, so we're gonna write, write to the path. So the writing piece is what I mentioned previously, so we're gonna write to that path with the, the session ID. And um, we're gonna save the file name we're going to sort the sessions um, with uh, with a key. So the K stands for key. We're going to sort by the key. And in this for each loop, this is the key value pair thing I mentioned. So when you input a um, when you input a value inside of the input section here for the name, it's going to automatically take that input. It's going to place it next to a key which is name. So to explain that, if I input uh, say I input A here. When I input A there, it's automatically going to tack, and I realize that my I realize that my uh, my coloring isn't the greatest. So let me actually just explain it here. So say so we have our key and our value. So our value here is what we input in the field. So if I input A, automatically my key is going to be associated to uh, the name of what I've inputted. And it states here that it's, it's going to basically have a key value pair. So our value is A, and then our key is going to be name equals A. Because remember, we're changing the name. And so the name is the key, and A is the value. And this is auto-populated. So the name piece is always auto-populated. And we need to figure out a way to adjust this. And the reason being is that, we remember, the, the end goal is to make sure that we can get to admin and then we need admin equal to one. And there needs to be, the, the equals isn't really there, it's just a space, so admin space one. That's what we're trying to get to. So here we have our key value pair for, for each. So when you input your A, it's gonna be tacked against name. And uh, that's really the, the key piece there. So once it's written, then it needs to be read. So let's go back to this for each loop. So what this for each loop is stating is that basically we're going to read through that data, that, that data file of all those key value pairs. So say we have a massive file, right? And in this file, we have a series of key value pairs. So we'll say all these keys here, 
and all these values here. And now what this explodes piece is gonna do, and this is actually something I looked into, um, and I'll show you the page in a second. Uh, but what it what this explodes do is it's basically it's um it's separating out based off of a delimiter. And the delimiter is like this like the little piece in between the key and value. And the piece between those are is gonna be the slash n. So that's gonna be the new line. That's the delimiter that we're exploding out on. So the delimiter is going to be after the value, so we're going to have a series of slash n's, that, and that's all going to the new lines here. So once this for each explodes gets to this new line, it's going to then explode these sentences out separately. So he's going to separate all these different lines by themselves. And then again, it's going to explode it out by the space, and the space is going to be between the key and the value. So we're going to explode it out again, so we have a key separate from the value, and those are the two separate things we're going to do. And once we've exploded that out from the space, then we're actually going to do a comparison. So we're going to check and say, okay, um, the, the zero position, zeroth position is going to be the key. We're going to say, okay, is there, if there's nothing there, then, you know, move on. But if there's something there, what I want you to do is I want you to take the first, the first value, which is going to be the key, or not the value. So we're going to take the first item, which is the key, and then we're going to take the second item, which is the value. We want you to compare those, okay? So I know it was a lot, um, but it was important to kind of talk through the explosion piece because that's going to come into like the, the answer later on. And the point I was talking about is this explosion uh, uh, website here, basically talking about the explode function, which I thought was quite useful. So with that being said, now we're going to hopefully try to solve this bad boy or bad girl, however you want to do it. Um, so let me close all those out. and. To take a step back here, so we, we know we know a few things. We know that there's an explodes piece, we know that it's taking in a name, and we know that the delimiter is the new line. And also, if you look through here, there is no sanitization. So we can actually include a new line in our URL encoding. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually put in our test our test value, so that can be anything. So we'll say we could say test if we want to make it a little easier to understand. So that's something we put into our input box, right? We so we put we put test and we, when we, we, you know, we push submit. And once we've done that, we want to automatically um, add a new line. And that new line, we automatically want to include admin. And then we want a space. And then we want one. And the reason being is that this is going to be our key. This is going to be our value. And once we've done that, they're going to be compared. And once they're compared, then we know that that print condition is going to be true. So then we're going to get our password back. And we know that we're going to get the, 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 the print condition true is because if we have admin, remember up here, if we have admin and one equal together, that means we're going to print the password. So we'll go through here and we'll show you what the answer looks like. So if we go to the back, we'll say our command. So we're going to say name and then we're going to have uh, equals. And I can't, I don't know if I can zoom in. I can't. Okay. So you just have to see this. So we have name equals what I've written previously. And then we have admin here, which could be anything that could be test, that could be bogus, that could be whatever. And then we have the, uh, the percent sign um, zero a, which is going to be the new line, uh, you're on coded, we have admin again, which is the key, remember the key that's for this, the comparison. And then we have the percent two zero, which is space, and then we have one, and which is our value. So we do enter there. And then basically, what we've done there is we've posted that um, we've written it to the session file, but now we need to read it. And to read it, all you need to do is basically, you don't have to really change anything here. You can just say change name. And then it's going to read back that answer. And we can inspect this and we have the correct session um, ID here. And that's our answer for the next one. So I kind of feel like I explained that in a reasonable way, uh, but I'm sure you'll let me know. Uh, anyways, I'll see you on the next one.